Hello and welcome to Harsh Critique. Every single time I do one of these, I feel like I want to pull my own hair out, and I'm sure today won't be any different. Today we're doing a Patreon-requested critique of an SCP article, so let's dive into it. All right, we got the item number, we got the object class. Oh, I'm not, yeah, not optimistic already, just from the, <laughs> look at all the addendums. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight addendums. That can't possibly be good. It, th there's eight addendums, but the description is, what, three sentences long? Oh, God. All right, well, let's dive into it, I guess. SCP-X6X is to be contained within a humanoid containment cell with a lead-lined form-fitting box? That's not what a box... no, nope. What you're meaning is a lead-lined box, probably with foam on the inside to fit it... Yeah, that's, that's what you mean, and that's what you should say if that's what you mean. Access to SCP-X6X for any reason, comma? Act, yeah, that's a weird sentence structure you've got going on there. Access to SCP-XXX for any reason, pause, is restricted to those with level 3 clearance and above. It's only to be moved from its containment when reality anchors are set in place and turned on. Is required to be moved containment cells once a week under the supervision of the project lead. I don't mind you having the pro a project lead for this because instead of a named person, which is what a lot of people do, but you, you capitalized the project lead as though it's a proper title. Not to mention, just basic grammar is required to be moved containment cells once a week. <laughs> I, I think you mean is required to be moved... <laughs> is, is required to be moved is required to be transferred between containment cells, probably? Oh, God. If Project Lead is unavailable at the time when it begins to show signs of unrest, emergency powers are to be given to the senior researcher on site. Emergency powers to do what? <laughs> it doesn't explain it. It just goes right into failed transportation. What? You can't just say emergency powers? And what do you mean... <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, any failed transportation is to be documented, and any personnel present at the time of failure are to be quarantined and contained as instances of scp xxx one <coughs> uh, That wasn't a laugh, that was a cough. <laughs> that was a laugh. These instances of scp xxx one are to be held at Site-88. Nice. Uh, site 88 is the site that uh, I write a lot of my articles into. My restless nature of SCP XXX is noted during test log 3. What? Don't tell me that in the special containment procedures. That has nothing to do with the containment procedures. The restless nature. Also, that's super off tone. Your, your tone's kind of iffy to begin with, but it wasn't enough to be pointed out. But the restless nature is super bad clinical tone. Jesus. Note as we have special containment procedures. What? You don't need to differentiate. If there's a separate set of... Special containment procedures covers everything. It doesn't just... I mean, and you've already got it covering the scp xxx one and things. I guess what you're trying to say is that, like, maybe the dash 2 instances is sort of a new thing? But even if... Like, I wouldn't make a differentiated, like, uh, bold, big, bold title for the second set of containment procedures. But if you're gonna, just be like new stuff is going on, that kind of thing, not what you have when further, in, yeah, because it's when further information is after this will be updated to reflect such events. Just say that at the beginning. Like, you don't even need to, you don't need to preface it with a bold note. Description. Oh, man, I read ahead a little bit in my head here. SCP is an oval-shaped container resembling an egg with markings and engravings of unknown origin. SCP XXX is currently unknown. SCP, the SCP is currently known to only be active when touched by human skin, living or otherwise. Come on, you can't. It's only active when it's touched by human skin. What does active mean? You can't just skip that part. <sighs> F 
this draft. Come on. Currently undergoing testing and research due to the circumstances of its discovery. Of course, that means you must immediately go into an addendum covering the discovery, which you don't even need an addendum for. You can just put it in the description proper. After you finish describing your anomaly, what's anomalous about this? It's just an... Mm, it's just an oval... It's just an egg. It's another f***ing egg. <sighs> and here we abandon clinical tone entirely. Great. The SCP was found visited on the desk of a high-ranking member of the O5 Council when the council member walked into her office at the beginning of the day. It was simply waiting for her. Simply. She immediately called an anomaly containment team to remove it from her desk. When the team arrived on site, they attempted to move, clad with standard anomaly clad with. Motherfucker. Anomaly removal gear. <laughs> standard anomaly. Every anomaly is different. This is the problem with the idea of thinking there are standard things you can do. That's the whole point of the SCP document as a, as a concept, right? Is that there is no standard. You can have a few little things, but like, uh, let's put on our anomaly removal gear. <laughs> like, that's an actual thing. Of course, it's an O5 member. A high-ranking member of the O5 Council, by the way. Not just any member, because the O5 Council is literally the highest-ranking members of the Foundation. Like... 054 is the same as 057. It's... Oh my god. And if you're going to say a high-ranking member of the 05 Council, just name them. But don't even use 05. There's no reason. Why? Why? The council member was instructed to move office. Hmm. Switch offices? Any other way to phrase that that makes sense rather than move office? Move office. You, move office. You. I caveman, you move office now. While well, SCP XXX was present, <laughs> Eleven O Five Council member encounters an anomaly, calls an anomaly containment team, but the team is the one that has to be like, "Oh, by the way, you shouldn't be in here while we're doing this." SCP XXX caused great alarm in the facility again with the clinical tone not just not being there, with no other options, no other options. You haven't described anything about this as this day. <laughs> It's dangerous or even weird. It showed up in her office. What? Someone could have left that. This could be the work. This could be a prank. Someone just like left an egg on her desk. <laughs> Cause great alarm in the facility with no other options. They set up a makeshift testing chamber by lining the walls with lead and covering the windows. They then, why? <sighs> they then had D-Class go into the chamber and attempt to move it with different tools and items. Once D-Class, one D-Class was started to pick up with their bare hands. When doing so, it was picked up with great ease. Anytime, anytime in a clinical document that you feel a need to put quotes around something, pick something else. You don't have to quote the person involved. Your job is to rephrase it in a way that is going to be clearly understandable to the audience. And in this, in, in universe, it's clearly understandable to anyone reading it. That's the point of clinical tone. If you give up on that and just go, well, Joe said it was easy to pick up. Like, there's no point in doing that. <sighs> SBA also revealed some of its anomalous properties by lighting up. <laughs> I know what you mean now, sort of. Like, it, it's, it's an egg that lit up, which again, still isn't anomalous. But when you say it <laughs> revealed some of its anomalous properties by lighting up, I'm just imagining an egg smoking something. <laughs> something advertiser friendly, by the way. <laughs> When put in a containment box to be transported, it became immovable? Immobile, I think, maybe, is the word you're looking for here? And the box was unable to be lifted. Confused, they had the D-Class who had put... <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yep, you just completely abandoned your clinical tone for this. Like, you're not even trying anymore. Into the box to attempt to lift it once more. He did so was then escorted to a containment cell where it would be hell. Motherfucker. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Let's just... Subject. The object. Procedure. Two D-Class personnel are sent into the room. D-Class 1 is instructed to don... Mm -hmm. The latex gloves placed on the plastic table next to the wooden table. Oh my god. You don't need to go into this much detail. Come on. This is just words for words sake. This is just... In Look, I know, 
<laughs> Look, I know when you were in school or you were in college and people were like, write a 20 page essay on subject. And you just had to fill things up with uh, filler words and all this other stuff. Don't do that for this. <laughs> Is instructed to don the latex gloves. The latex gloves. Which we've already been introduced to latex gloves. There have been a character that went to my brother's wedding. The latex gloves placed on the plastic table next to the wooden table. On <laughs> <laughs> Let's be very specific here. This is just word, like I said, just words for words sake. Is given an instruction to pick it up with an instructor to throw. You could, oh, during the t <laughs> oh, what is wrong with these people? During the time it took D Class 1 to don the latex gloves, it seemed to glow a red hue as if to indicate distaste. <sighs> You cannot be attributing emotional factors to an egg, especially when up to this point, nothing, and I do mean nothing that you've described would indicate to me that this is an emotional egg. <laughs> the red hue then subsided and gave off a distinct blue and yellow glow. The red hue gave off a blue and yellow glow? What kind of sentence structure is that? When D class 2 through, capitalize your T for no reason, to D class 1. Wait, that's just the whole sentence. Usually when you say when something did something, there's like an after, like a consequence in the same sentence. So it'd be like, when D class 2 through SEPXXXX to D class 1, the whole world exploded. You, you, you have to have something that happens after that or else it doesn't make any sense. When D class 1 attempted to catch, he was thrown to the floor from the weight uh, and to help, but was told to stop. Why? After 30 seconds of struggling, he began to complain of a temperature, 30 seconds, of a temperature-based discomfort in his hands that were under the can glow red again. After four minutes, had reached an extreme brightness, bathing the entire, and no one's like, oh, let's just see what happens. <sighs> Screams and cries of pain. All at once, the light receded, cooling down to a blue and yellow glow, as seen when being held by open hands. I was then instructed to put it back into containment. Like, I mean, like, all at once. Anytime anyone uses something like all at once, I'm always reminded of that poem, The End of the World by Archibald MacLeish. Like, quite unexpectedly, the top blew off. Yeah, the problem with it is that it's not clinical, obviously. But at the same time, not only is it non-clinical, it's not descriptive enough. It doesn't tell me what the f*** is going on all at once. But it's just, you, you don't even need the beginning of that sentence. It could just be, the light receded. But what is cooling down to a blue and yellow... You can't describe a light cooling down. I know what you mean, because a blue color is cooler than... Now, when I say cooler, I mean, like, literally in the, the sense of red being hot and blue being cold colors. But, of course, when it comes to actual temperature, blue is w way hotter than red. <laughs> so, just like yellow is, ray is, is hotter than red, it's not way hotter, but in actual temperatures, like, if you heat something up and it's red, it's hot. If it's yellow, it's very hot. If it's blue, it is incredibly hot. So when you say something cools down from red to blue, I'm like, what the f*** are you talking about? You're using the wrong words for everything. The conclusion come to by researchers, again, your tone, overseeing this test is as follows. SPD is activated by touch, but, big caps around but. Could you imagine getting an official report with big caps around a butt like that? You might as well just start italicizing things like, but can only be safely held by bare skin. I mean, come on. After some other similar tests, why would you <laughs> like the idea that something like, okay, all right, all right, all right. Th this was a really interesting test. Lots of interesting things happened. Let's do the exact same thing over and over again. After some other similar tests, the researchers have, which you don't show. And you've got a test log too, right beneath this. I can see it, <laughs> but you don't do anything about it. After some other similar tests, the researchers have concluded, the researchers, no one specific, have concluded that it was touched by bear, if touched by a human, but through some means of thin protection, will increase its external temperature to the melting point of that object in order to, in an attempt, okay, you're, again, you're ascribing human motives to this thing, 
It is it is trying to touch your skin. No, it's not. It it is doing things that may lead to that, but it doesn't have a motivation. It's just an object. At least so far, you haven't given me that this is an a, a, a human being like object. You haven't given me that this has got a personality or emotions. I mean, you keep describing it in the narrative as though it has emotions, like it got angry and turned red, you know, or. In this case, it's trying to touch people's skin, but you haven't described the object in your three-sentence description in a way that tells me that this is a sentient or sapient or any kind of intelligent object. Like, just whatever. Test log two. Okay, here we go. Ten D-class personnel were sent into its containment cell. Number of them were clo I get this because it's still a draft. It's fine. They were clothed in a full-body lead shield. During previous episodes, it was covered, they gave off a very faint amount of radi- Wait, hold on. This is- t this literally is test two. So, you said there were similar tests done after test one. So this isn't test two. Th there needs- Hmm. Internal consistency is not here. During previous tests, it was discovered that it gave off a very faint amount of radiation while active. It was thought to- it was thought of to test a diverse group. I'm not even going to talk about the tonal problems anymore because, like, it's obvious, it's pervasive. We're just gonna we're just gonna move on. It was thought of to test a diverse group of personnel to see if oh no oh no to see if a specific racial group or gender caused it to give off more radiation. We had the D class pass the object from one to another in a circle. Oh dear. The 3D class with the lead lined suits are not to participate. What are they there for then? Also, apparently the number was three. As the test took place, it was passed between a Caucasian male and female, an Asian male and female, an, an African male and female, and a Caucasian male with red hair. The results are as follows. Normal radiation. Why would anyone think of this as a test? Like, what indication did this thing give that this was a possibility? This is why you need another test in between, if you're going to do it this way. Like, there needs to be some sort of lead up to this. It just comes out of nowhere. Hey, let's see if the angry red egg is racist. Caucasian male, normal radiation output. Caucasian female, it spiked to abnormal but not unsafe levels. Asian male, normal. Same thing for Asian female as the Caucasian female. African female, a spike, but very small uh, hike. You, you probably meant spike there, I'm just going to say. Compare, unless you just would, whatever. Compared to the even the Caucasian female spike, red-haired Caucasian male, the radiation spike seemed to match that of the African female. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with these people? <laughs> All right, uh, and it's just pretty inconclusive. I can't tell if it's racist or not. Let's do a lot more tests. I want to see if this egg is racist. <laughs> oh, this makes no fucking sense at all. None. What? The conclusion from the research is that it seems to output radiation at random, so they've discovered it's not racist, although they've decided to test a wider pool of subjects before they come to a conclusion like, it's probably not racist. But let's check again with more people. Also, by the way, nothing about the above indicates that it's random because every female had a radiation spike. That's not random. That's not how any of those words work. During the exodus from the containment cell, the Caucasian female fell unconscious. Uh, I am not. No, no. We got a racist egg, is what we got here. I'm forgoing all clinical tone because she is coming. With what clinical tone? The addendum is top secret and is not to be seen anywhere without level 4 clearance. An incident noted at the end of test log 2, following as an audio log taken from a terminal outside of an elevator in wing H. Start of audio log. I am foregoing all clinical tone because she is coming. First of all, this is the writer telling you that they're not going to use clinical tone in this because they don't want to have to use it and because it's, you know, a normal person talking or whatever. But second of all, there never was any clinical tone in this article. And, like, don't do that. You don't have to say it. Just give it, you, the context alone should say it. You're telling me a context when you're not showing me a context. My name is Dr. Emma Twees. I am a researcher at Site 64. Many containing instances of human anomalous she. You're calling it she. She doesn't seem to be interested in other anomalous humanoids located down here. She. She just wants us. 
An explosion can be heard in the background. Where are you, Mommy? Miss Twinkle wants to have tea. A grown woman can be heard saying this in the background. <laughs> a grown woman? Oh, God, save me. We were running some video after she woke up and... Mommy? I don't know how much. Closer now, we heard him making the voice of a child. Help me. Dr. Tweets pleads into the panel for and says, Yes, baby, do you want me to play with Mistress Twinkle? The woman continues, Yes, sweetie, would you like to go pick your room to play? No, I want to play here. A loud stomp is heard over the mic. Ding, the sounds of an elevator. Oh, ding. Actually wrote ding. The sounds of an elevator door is opening can be heard. If it's with tips, it sounds of a gun cocking. Who are you? I didn't invite you. Did you invite them, Mistress Twinkle? Mistress Twinkle didn't invite you either. After this, the sound of wind gushing. <laughs> wind gushing? And then gunshots fills the microphone. The sound of three bodies hitting the floor can be heard afterwards. That was a close one, Sarge. A male voice is heard. Wrong, Dr. Tweese can be heard. You dispatched an instance of scp xxxx one with the mental faculties of a child, which turned out to be... <laughs> which turns out to be very dangerous. You are constantly introducing random elements that have no narrative through thread. Like, there's nothing that connects this to the thing that came before. There's nothing that connects the thing that came before to the thing that came before that. None of this makes any sense. You just throw a bunch of random shit together and be like, all right, that's an SCP for you. Ha <laughs> ha. You don't understand what's going on? Well, you're not supposed to understand what's going on. Fucking hell. Subject, the object. Procedure, wait. <laughs> now you've gone the opposite direction from going from way too much information to way too little information. <laughs> Wait. The result of simply waiting, simply waiting. Oh, I, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about tone, but come on, come on. After three and a half days, it began to seem uneasy, rocking from side to side. <laughs> Again, you're ascribing motives to this object, which up until now, they st I still don't understand what the f*** was going on in the previous log. So up till now, I don't understand why you're ascribing any human motives to this f***ing egg. After seven days, the restlessness increased. It threw itself off the table, shattering the containment box. It was held it. It was held it. Yep, that, that's the thing. It began to roll from side to side, build speed as it went. I, I think you're accidentally to word there. Eventually gained enough speed to shatter the bulletproof glass between itself and the research team. Having thought of this outcome, Project Lead Jim Cass caught in his open palm as he had expected nothing happened. Came to a complete stop in his palm and there was no way adversely affected it and walked with it under his arm back to the containment cell and sat on the table. It would seem that during long times of no contact with human skin, the object begins to grow restless and do anything and will do anything, I'm imagining what you mean to say, to meet with human skin once more. It seems very similar to SCP. And then it will do anything to reach its goal. Motherfucker. You know, I was thinking of SCP-093 as it was going along, and now I realize that's probably just how you uh, inspired yourself to write that single test log, which, again, has no narrative connection to anything that came before. Subject, the object. It's a collective test of 4 through 30... No, a collective log of tests 4 through 36, I think is what you mean to say here. For brevity's sake, these were all replications of test 2 as it was through well, at least now finally finally a narrative thread that actually connects to something that happened before as it was through a larger pool of test subjects was wait what okay let's try this sentence again these were all replications of test two as it was though a larger pool of test subjects was needed for testing thought that's the word that's missing it, or not missing but that's the word that's misspelled in such a way as <laughs> thought it was thought a larger pool this sentence still doesn't work, really, but it explains why my brain was like, what the hell's going on here? Although due to the events described in Redacted, we have taken extra repercussions? Precautions? Is I'm pretty sure what you mean. We've taken extra repercussions. <laughs> All D-class personnel were garbed. Oh, wow. Not clad this time. <laughs> With radiation hazard suits, and only their hands are to be uncovered. Then they're not protected from radiation that's not really how a radiation hazard suit works like ah oh, yes the rest of your body is fine but your hands we're going to expose that to massive amounts of radiation therefore you will only lose your hands because that's how radiation works right of course these 32 tests we had a group of more than 200 unique individuals participate you have a numbers right here the results are as follows okay those aren't results that's a listing of the numbers of people involved 
which you don't need, because you already said more than 200 unique individuals, although you could have given an exact number. And then directly below it, you show some... Uh, 15 Caucasian males, sent the radiation upwards, that's half of them, none reach dangerous levels. 12 Caucasian females caused the radiation to spike. Four of these reach dangerous levels, that's less than half. 16 in one of these meter scanners go haywire, and the room was filled with a flash of light. The D-class who... This happened too. Immediately fell unconscious. He was removed from the testing continued. 16 Asian females caused the radiation spike, none of which reached deadly levels. 20 of these reached unsafe levels. There were a total of five bright flashes and unconscious D-class. I'm going to tell you that your whole is the egg racist thing probably needs to go. Like, there's nothing about this that is interesting, and I'm, I'm just not sure what it's trying to get at. And the conclusion of the threat level is at 3% for deadly encounters, 19% for unsafe encounters, and 47% chance of increasing radiation. After incident audio log was reviewed, it was determined that any future incident to be moved to Site 88 for better security measures, providing provided that there are provided there that we here are okay. Every time I run into one of these weird center structures, my brain wants to try and fix it and then eventually just get lost. So let's try this again for better security measures provided there that we here at Site 64. These changes have been enacted in the special containment procedures and is to be and are are plural changes to be strictly followed with no exceptions. After the prisoner break incident, all prisoner break incident. What? Oh, it's because in the audio, I guess in the audio log, it's considered a prisoner break incident. I love your quotations. Those make things way easier for me to understand what's going on. Can you tell that I'm being sarcastic? If not, I'm being sarcastic. All security prisoners want to remain on high alert when near it or any of its sub-anomalies. the fuck? Discoveries have been made recently. Addendum. New discoveries. Discoveries have been made recently. Nice opening. Good to know. It was found in the plains of southern England during an archaeological dig near Stonehenge. Hmm. An ancient worship center was unearthed. This center <laughs> contained many corridors and objects, much of which were non anomalous. That's a center structure. Was unearthed. Period. This center. It's where you need a period right after between unearthed and this. Contained many corridors and objects, most of which were non-anomalous. And what is in this, what is believed to be a worship center, there is a room stands in the midst of the corridors and hallways, being big enough to approximately hold 200 humanoids. This is believed to be the main hall. Wow! Your Senate structure just fell apart. It's like... It just it, you went from at least mostly coherent to completely incoherent in the space of one lock. Wow. Foundation was called in to deal with an anomalous object in the center of this main room. The object is egg-shaped and has engraving and markings of unknown origins, being similar in look and pro in look and properties. Wow. To SCP-XXX, the Foundation has classified this as an instance of SCP-XXX-2. This instance will be held at Site-64 for further study and experimentation. Alright, listen up, motherfucker. The solution to your problems here is simple. You have created a boring object. And because it's boring to begin with, three sentences long in the description. Are you out of your fucking mind? You cannot have eight addendums for an article with a three-sentence description. At least, you can't do so if nothing in the description explains anything about why it's in... Why is this... Why should this... Why should I read more? What about that first... What about this draws you in that you can think of? Like, come on. Think about it. You're looking at this article. You're reading it. You read the first, you read the special containment procedures, which are very seldomly the part that's going to hook people. It's, it's where a lot of people find their hooks, but more often than not, it's not what's going to hook them. What's going to hook somebody is a sentence in the description, something that makes them go, wait, what? And then continue to read. Nothing about this. It's an oval shaped container resembling an egg with markings and engravings of an unknown origin. It's currently known to only be active when touched by human skin. It's undergoing testing. That's it. That's your description. I mean, and it's been a while around for a little while because the test logs indicate at least 
several months worth of testing. So they should know more about it. And of course they do know more about it because <laughs> what, is, what are they? Uh, the description has to cover everything. It should cover the XXX-1 instances. It should cover the XXX-2 instances. Everything in the description should describe the object. Why is it anomalous? And then you go into your test logs and the first test log is pretty simple. And in fact, okay. The first test log gives you something to go off of, although the test is incredibly strangely constructed. They're like, all right, let's let it <laughs> let's let it just kill this guy. As far as they know, it doesn't kill him, but, but like they just let it the sag sit on him. And it's like, ah, I'm dying. I'm dying. It's ah, ah. And then they just <laughs> they're just like, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. You just imagine like they're behind the glass screen, like stroking their beards going, yes, yes, take write that down yes he's screaming he's screaming in pain yes yes let's write that down God. it just whatever and so for some people that's what the foundation is weirdly enough that's their view of what the foundation is it's three guys standing behind glass while two d class die in a room going yes that's quite interesting scribble 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 oh uh, yes there's blood everywhere and you see how far over it went to that? Yes. Let's, uh, let's write that down. That's some pe For some people, that's what the foundation is. Like, there's not interesting stories, not interesting people, just... Yes. Death, destruction. <laughs> it's so normal. <laughs> Which I get. I get the draw of that. It's just... Uh... <sighs> Alright, let's keep going here. The problem is your Tesla, and you then... And then you just, out of nowhere, you're just like... I wonder if this egg is racist. Yeah, let's take that. Let's, yeah, let's check it out. I'm like, that's your thought? That's your, that's your, like, oh, and where does that come from? It doesn't come from anywhere. Like, I do not suggest you follow this line of inquiry, but if you do, your first test log could have been between two people of various whatevers and, like, radiation could have done. And then you do another test. And, and it's the opposite way, and no radiation comes off of it. And then you go, huh, why did one of them cause radiation, one of them not cause radiation? And then you do your radiation test, and maybe you check to see if it's male or female, or maybe you check to see if it's Caucasian or Asian or African or red hair, <laughs> or red hair, like, look how red hair is separated out like it's its own ethnicity. That's, that's just fantastic. I don't understand this whole aside, by the way. This whole aside is strange and needs to go. Let's just move on. I'm not even going to worry about it. it. And it doesn't connect to anything. Like the, the urgent top secret addendum. Uh, there's a person walking around. I mean, you don't tell us what the Dash 2 instances are. You just have this stupid audio log. It still doesn't tell you anything. <sighs> I love the idea, though, that they do just say, what happens if we don't do nothing? And then it just starts going, I want to touch people. <laughs> and then shoots through the window. <laughs> Oh, man. And then they're like, no, but really, is it racist with the next locks? <laughs> We're going to test this 32 more times to check. Yeah, but is it racist? You have no strong narrative through line. You have no characters that stick around. Uh, you've got nothing like you. Uh, nothing at all. All right. The first thing I will always suggest when I tell people how to fix a thing is pick especially in flash fiction pick one character and focus on how the object affects them and that is always your best bet for a flash fiction piece like this especially since you do introduce uh dr emma twist he's a researcher at site 64 use her tell her story how is she affected by the weird, possibly racist egg? Oh my god. I am just out of my... I, you know what? I feel sometimes like you people are not even trying. I feel like you're wiping your ass with a draft and tossing it to me like I'm the fucking toilet to flush it down. And the weird part is, I know that's not true. It feels like it. Every time I read one of these things because it doesn't feel like they're trying. But I know they are. Not only are they trying, they're tossing it to me not to throw it away, not to get rid of it, but to try and make it better. But there's nothing here. You have a three sentence description. You can't do that. You give me a draft with a three sentence description 
What the fuck am I supposed to do with that? You don't describe your SCP object. There's nothing here but a set of eight logs with completely random things going on in it. There's nearly no narrative structure at all. And by the way, your clinical tone throughout the piece is bad in all of the ways that I've explained it to you. I can't help you people until you learn to help yourself. Are you not listening to me? Are you listening at all to the previous things I've said in previous videos? I, honest to God, want my viewers and subscribers, and this isn't everybody, by the way, but I want all of you to get better at this. But if you're not going to listen, I don't understand what the fuck I'm doing here. So come on, please, for the sake of my sanity, fucking stop doing this. And this isn't just about harsh critique, by the way. I choose to do this because I find it particularly entertaining for my audience, and I think you guys enjoy it mostly. Is it just about your drafts in general? Like, okay. Get out of your own head. That's the best bet here. You know why this description is three sentences long? Because the writer knows exactly what the fuck is going on. And rather than communicate that to the audience, they assumed that the audience understood what was already in their head. And then they wrote their article. That's why this article has a three sentence description. And that's, you can't teach that. I guess you can't teach people to stay out of their own heads. You can't teach people that what you know and what the other person you're talking to know. That's just basic empathy. Understand that other people have thoughts different than your own. Okay? I don't know what the fuck this article is about. I know for a fact that the writer knows what the fuck is going on and wants to communicate it to the audience. And this is what they came up with. And it is incredibly disheartening. So anyway, that's me taking down somebody that paid me $20 to review their article. <laughs> oh my god, why do you people do this to yourselves and me? I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna calm down. I'm gonna settle myself. And then I am going to thank people <laughs> from my Patreon. And, and I'll do my outro. Just give me a second. All right. If you like the video, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell out next to that so you get notified when a new video comes out. And I'd like to thank two new Patreon backers. One, the $20 pledge of Logan Peterson. And the $5 pledge of Salvatore Lodato. Thank you guys very much for helping support me. It's the kind of thing that makes videos like today sting a little bit less. I appreciate all my patrons quite a lot and everyone else in the audience as well, even if sometimes I don't sound like it. I love you guys. You're the guys helping me get closer and closer to doing this for a living and that is an amazing feeling regardless of how I feel right now. I'm going to pin a comment in this video and I will give you guys an opportunity to submit new drafts to me for the next harsh critique. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt me physically to do these just emotionally and mentally that's all so and plus people like them if you want to join my patreon like everybody else on the screen right now you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash d thank you very much for watching and i will see you on tuesday